Sunday School Lesson for June the 14th, 2015, Lesson 2. We are still starting from Unit 1. Amos rails against injustice. Injustice. Amos rails against injustice. Uh, we have a subject said from the adult quarterly, uh, justice is not just us. Justice is not just uh, us. When we look at this word rails, and it means to be uh, utterly complained, of, uh, of vehemently uh, denunciation, okay, of something that you consider that is wrong. And in this lesson, injustice, okay, violates the uh, rights of others, is unfair action, and it treated someone in the wrong manner. And uh, then we look at the word from the subject, justice. In this lesson, okay, in the book of Amos, uh, justice means uh, doing what is right, uh, clear self, and it is not just us. Now, uh, as we started this lesson, uh, I feel like it's unfortunately that uh, in many of our uh, Sunday school material, we have a time to move on without really getting into the detail and do a more of an exposition, okay, of the uh, particular book that we are studying. And therefore, there will be many things that we're going to have to skip over to stay with this time limit that we have for studying this book of Amos. This is a very important book, but the Word of God is important. But as we get the right interpretation, then we should be able to make application that is very applicable to our life. Okay? Interpretation first. But if our interpretation is wrong, then our application normally going to be about 95% wrong. Okay? So interpretation first. Okay, now, uh, as we looked at last on this lesson, and we saw why God chose Amos, who was a shepherd boy, and a, a sheep herder, and a dresser of sycamore fruit. No one in his family had been a prophet, and no one had been a priest. But God chose this, uh, this country boy to go up north and speak to uh, the northern kingdom, which is called Samaria, in Samaria, and they were called Israel, the ten tribes, okay, had broke away from the tribe of Judah and Benjamin, which was uh, called uh, uh, the tribe of Judah, okay, left in Jerusalem. And uh, when they went up there, they uh, built uh, the king that was in charge of them, they built worship places up there to keep the people from going back to Jerusalem. And keeping those annual feast days that, that, that the nation Israel were commanded in the book of uh, ex, uh, uh, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. And we encourage you to, if you have time, to read uh, uh, the book of Deuteronomy. It's quite a few scriptures, but they was commanding the book of Deuteronomy, the younger generation, uh, on the east bank of the Jordan River for about 18 months. Okay, before they cross over Jordan, the God was going to give them the land of Canaan. And what he required of them when they reached the land, to stay in the land and be blessed by God, them in the land. Now he told them, Moses tell them, if you don't do this, you're going to be chastised. Okay, so now in the book of Amos, uh, we're dealing with uh, the life of the Jews in the, in the promised land, about really between seven and 850, 750 to 800 years after the book of Deuteronomy. And that generation that is living now, okay, in the book of Amos, okay, uh, they had got away from, okay, even the men of their four parents, that had got away from uh, the word of God and doing their own thing. But God had to chastise them, and uh, they repented, and uh, they rebelled against God, okay, uh, uh, they repented, he, uh, and uh, he uh, restored them back, okay, to the land. But they went all through this process for over 350 years. Okay, they rebelled, they called it three hours, and they had to pay restitution. He allowed those uh, heathen nations around them to take various tribes into captivity, 
and then when they repented, then God restored them. But now things have gotten so bad that God was going to, uh, if they didn't uh, repent, that God was going to have uh, them taken into captivity. So in this lesson, okay, uh, if we get the right in interpretation, I've said previously, then we can make application that what God requires of us, okay, Christian, in this uh, uh, age of grace, and that if uh, we don't, do not do what God says, how God is going to take us to the woodshed and chastise us, you're not going to lose your salvation, but you certainly will not get any rewards in heaven, okay? So uh, there's lots that we can learn. Have a look at this lesson, and we want you to read the uh, entire 14 number of Psalms, okay, for a background scripture, uh, a devotional scripture, and then read the entire fifth chapter of Amos. And if you haven't done so, we'd like for you to take time and read the first uh, five verses of Amos, because this explains a lot, okay, about uh, Amos' work when he went to uh, Samaria, okay, to the northern kingdom. And then our print is taken from the fifth chapter, verses uh, 14 and 15. Then we skip to the 18th verse, through the 27th verse. And let us look at the key verse, uh, instruction to from Amos to the people. Let uh, judgment, and this word judgment means justice, okay, run down as water, and righteousness doing what is right as a mighty stream. We're going to read about that later. And notice close to how it's written in the NIV. Let justice roll down like water, and righteousness like a never-failing stream of water. Okay? And uh, then as we look at the aim for studying this lesson, we have three very important aims from the uh, uh, adult quarterly. Also, would like for you to, if you, if you uh, have the uh, uh, adult commentary, and that's, that's what you say, God is not fooled. God is not fooled. You can't argue with God, friend. Now, he's omniscient. He knows. Okay, so here the aim from the adult quarterly says, learn how God established justice uh, for the righteous and punish the uh, punish deceivers. Okay, now keep in mind what the subject here from the, uh, adult, uh, from the commentary. God cannot be fooled. Okay, he knows. And he's not going to ask anyone about anyone else. He knows what you're doing, what you're not doing. He knows your thoughts, okay, 139 Psalm before. Okay, so uh, he knows, okay. And then uh, number two, recognize and, ref and uh, reflect on action of uh, injustice uh, with, within the community of faith. Okay, nobody said within the community of faith. Okay, the community of faith is uh, every born-again believer that make up the body of Christ. Uh, you have been saved because you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. You was uh, believe that he died, he was buried, and rose again according to the scripture. Then you uh, uh, become a part of the body of Christ, which is uh, called the community of faith. Now, there are no unsaved peoples in the community of faith. And uh, same way as you look at this lesson, Okay, the instruction here is given to God's chosen people, the nation Israel. Okay, he had told them what to do. God never did tell the uh, heathen around them, okay, how to live a life separated from him. But the, uh, his chosen people were to live a life that the heathen around them could see how they treat one another and know there had to be something different about them and their God. Okay, in the same way about the church age, the way we treat one another and the uh, community of faith. Okay, should make uh, some believers want to be like us, but it's unfortunate they don't see uh, this unity and this love in the many of us. And then number three, identify unjust practice. Okay, committed to uh, commit to stop their uh, participation in them. First, identify. Okay, uh, uh, unjust practice. And then after you identify, see what's going on then you should make a commitment to stop uh, their uh, participation in them. Don't compromise. Stand if you have to stand alone, okay, and help others to do the same. So you say, what can I do to help others do the same? The book of Hebrews, the 10th uh, 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 chapter, they let us uh, provoke one another to love and do good works. How do you provoke somebody to do this? Then you have to do it yourself. And when they see what you are doing, 
then you're going to have some influence on somebody else. So don't you participate in the, in the wrongdoing, okay, and injustice, but you stand. And uh, the Spirit of God is going to give you the strength, okay? And uh, so uh, we want you to read the introduction that is in the uh, adult quarterly. We want you to read the biblical content, okay, that will uh, give us uh, further insight into uh, why uh, Amos, okay, had such a task to do up in Samaria. Now, keep in mind, when you study about Amos, and Amos was just a, uh, a, a shepherd boy, okay, and he was a dresser of sycamore fruit, wild figs, okay, and, uh, but he was, uh, nobody in his family had been a prophet, nobody in the family had been from the, from the priestly line, but God chose him, the Spirit of God. Now this let us know that the Spirit of God gave him a gift. This is what God wanted him to do, okay? And uh, uh, we have been studying about uh, gifts, okay? The Spirit of God gives gifts according to His will. And whenever the Spirit of God give us a gift to do, okay, then we have to do it, or we should do it, okay? And if we fail to do it, then something is going to lack it on God's program. So the Spirit of God knows. So Amos had quite a job to do. Go up to Samaria, speak to the leaders, and tell them how God is displeased with what they have been doing, uh, the life that they were living. So uh, we want you to be sure and read the uh, uh, first part of that uh of the uh, fifth chapter, and uh, coming down to that uh, 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 14 verse with the first verse of our lesson, I uh, hope that you start at the 10th verse, the 10th verse at least, okay, and uh, there was some people, okay, we say uh, uh, that 13th verse, they are the, uh, prudent, uh, shall keep silent at that time, for it uh, is an evil time. Now, there was a prudent means it was some wise people, okay, they knew what the, some of the people, the leader was doing was wrong, but uh, uh, they didn't speak out, and they kept silent, okay? And we find some people today, okay, in our churches, okay, in this community of faith, they see something that is wrong, but uh, instead of speaking out, okay, they be silent. They say, I don't want to upset the apple cart, so I just leave it alone. Well, uh, whether we're dealing with the community of faith, whether we're dealing with society, okay, the government, okay, and on your job, okay, you should uh, uh, not uh, put up with, if you had an opportunity to speak out against, okay, open your mouth and speak up, and we're going to see that the Lord is going to be with you, okay, and uh, the first verse of our lesson tells us to, uh, uh, he's talking to the, uh, to the Jews up in Samaria now, the northern kingdom, okay, seek good and not evil, that he may live, so that the Lord, and I notice the way the Lord is written, all capital letters, Jehovah, self-existent, all-powerful one, the God of hosts. Now notice that capital G and a small O D, that's his Elohim. So Jehovah, uh, God, the God, that's his created name, okay, uh, Elohim. He created you and made you a nation, and he is the God of hosts. And that's a military term that uh, uh, he have an uh, 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 angel at his disposal. If he needed someone to fight for him, okay, he got a military force. He don't need me and you to fight. He don't need me and you to worship, okay, but he is all-powerful, okay, and uh, uh, he don't need us to worship him. We need to worship him, okay, to make us strong and be grateful and thankful and praise him for what he have done for us, what he have done, what he is doing, what he shall do, okay. And uh, it says, uh, the Lord said, uh, no, no, uh, 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 the Lord of hosts uh, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Now, they was had the impression because uh, they, uh, at that particular time, okay, Samaritan were living in prosperity, okay, plenty of everything, and uh, particularly the rich. And they thought that uh, God was blessing them, okay, for the right life that they was living, okay. It was not that God was blessing them for the right life that they were living, okay. God was blessing them because of who they were, but God was going to chastise them if they didn't change their ways, okay. Many of us, okay, 
we uh, uh, will serve the Lord, uh, so to speak, when we are poor and don't have much. But when we get uh, our feet off the ground and get a little change in our pocket, then we begin to get away from worshiping the Lord. Now, we're going to go to church, some of us, but we're going to live contrary to the Word of God. More about that later. And he says that uh, 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 hate the evil and love the good. And establish a uh, judgment or justice in the gate. Now, the gate here means the uh, leading, the uh, uh, leaders, and the judges, and you of uh, of the people. When you go back and read the previous chapter and see how they were treating the poor, okay, selling for a pair of shoes, and uh, they was uh, uh, taking them to court and charging them an exuberant amount of money, and uh, then they were using that money to have parties and getting drunk and buying uh, uh, luxury things sleeping in beds of ivory and wearing the best of clothes, and the poor didn't even have clothes to put on. So, uh, and he said, God is not pleased with that. Okay. Uh, be gracious unto the remnant of uh, Joseph. Now, we know Joseph, okay, one of the Torah tribe of uh, uh, sons of Ephraim, and he had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, and here he's speaking, they were representing, okay, the whole nation of Israel. Okay. And then, uh, 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 we want you to read those verses in between, okay, and um, and skip down to the 18th verse, and it says that. Uh, now let's go back in and uh, look at the end of that uh, that those verses. In our uh, 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 commentary, it says uh, the uh, the uh, the the. the uh, regular Sunday school book say, what do you think? For many Sunday morning worship uh, is a totality of their relationship with God. The rest of the week uh, is devoted to their own sinful way. Why do you think that uh, many of these same people believe that they are heavenly bound? Okay. Why do you think? Why do you think the uh, uh, Jews there uh, in Samaria Okay, the first two verses. Live in one way, and yet here we're going to see they was uh, going to the temple, uh, the place of worship, every feast day. They was uh, keeping the Sabbath. They were offering the sacrifices, and yet and still, they were living a sinful life. So why do you think, okay, they thought that everything going to be all right with them and God. They had another thing coming. Okay, now... There's a lot of application that we can uh, uh, get from this, even in our uh, churches today. Many of us think that uh, I can live any way I think I'm big enough uh, for uh, six days a week, as long as I go to church on a Sunday morning, okay, that God got to accept my coming. Well, God is not uh, going to accept it. You might be uh, uh, one of the most active members in the church, even in the pulpit. You might be the pastor. Okay, associate preacher on the deacon board and the choir. Okay, God is not saying, okay, I'm going to accept your coming, okay, because you're out of fellowship with me. Now, uh, there are many applications that we can learn from this, okay, and uh, I'm going to say something and I want you to understand entirely what I'm saying. Okay, we have, I'm, I'm a Baptist and I've been a Baptist uh, uh, since I was uh, about seven years of age and I uh, didn't know much. But God has blessed me to have an opportunity to study His Word, and uh, and uh, I'm still learning. I'm a long, long way from knowing it all. But uh, we have in our church, in our denomination, called the Articles of Faith. Okay, and I want you to check number fifteen, and it says that it, what it called that uh, Sunday. It says our Sabbath day. We're not going to get into whether we have a Sabbath day or not. But anyway, it's a day of worship because of what happened. But that number 15 says that uh, uh, we should abstain from sinful activity, all sinful activity, on a Sunday. Okay? Now, think about that statement. We should abstain on a Sunday. Well, what about the rest of the week? Okay? Uh, uh, and that is the way some of us feel, that uh, I can do everything that I think I'm big enough to six days a week. And uh, then on a Sunday, I'm going to church, I'm going to worship, I'm going to sing in the choir. I'm going to uh, preach in the pulpit. I'm going to deacon. I'm going to usher. I'm going to do this and do that in the church. Now, Christianity is a life. Okay, same way by the nation of Israel. They had a life to live. 
okay, every day. And the same way about the Christian. I mean, if, if this was true, okay, if Satan could have you six days a week, he'll help you to stay away from sinful activities on a Sunday, okay? So we want to think about what we are saying, okay, and realize that we got to live this life every day. If not, we ought to fellowship with the Lord and worry about that live. So therefore, uh, when we get to the second part of our lesson, and it says, uh, the day of the Lord, okay, and uh, the Jews really thought, okay, that the uh, day of the Lord was going to be a time when the nation Israel was going to be made a great nation like it was under King David, okay? And, uh, 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 and they thought that the day of the Lord was going to be a blessing and, uh, for the, the Jews and God going to punish the other people. But uh, whenever you study in the Old Testament and you see the day of the Lord, okay, the day of the Lord a few times mentioned in the New Testament too. But the day of the Lord is always the time of the tribulation period and the millennial reign of Christ, okay, when he will set up a kingdom for a thousand years. But scripture has to dictate which one are you talking about, whether it's the uh, tribulation period or whether it is the kingdom age. So they thought that the day of the Lord Okay, we're going to be a great blessing for them. They didn't realize that uh, there's going to be a tribulation period, and many of the Jews are going to be killed, okay, in that time period because all of them are not going to turn to the Lord. Okay, that's doing after the church has been raptured out. So they were saying there in the 18th verse, Amos saying, You are saying, okay, war to him that have, that uh, desire the day of the Lord. See, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. The day of the Lord is uh, cursing, okay, and not light, darkness. Why? Because that's a time of judgment, okay. And uh, uh, so here he is talking about the really the tribulation period, okay. And like we said, that uh, uh, they thought, okay, the day of the Lord will be a blessing, and they really thought that they were going to spend e automatically spend eternity with the Lord because they were Abraham's descendant. They were the seed of uh, uh, Abraham, okay, and uh, of the bloodline of King David, okay. But they had a, another lesson to learn. And then it says, uh, uh, he began to give them an analogy, okay, for them to think about when they talk about how safe they're going to be in the day of the Lord. He said, now notice this is a simile. As if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him. Get the picture. It's going to be a dangerous time. You're walking down the road and you see a lion. You know what that lion will do if he get his, get his paws on you. Okay, he's going to kill you. He's going to eat you. Okay. But you get away from the lion, and then you meet a bear. Now you're running from the bear. Okay. And they're both going to destroy you. Uh, and when you get to the house, you open the door and you go in, you're out of breath, and you lean uh, uh, your hand on the wall, and a serpent bites him. Now, in that Middle East, okay, what, they, what he was talking about, the houses that they was built were mostly built out of, uh, huts are built out of uh, clay, mud, okay, dirt. Uh, the sun had dried, it made it hard, but snakes would get into that type of uh, building through the wall, eventually, and they would sometimes come in. Okay, so uh, you tired, you lean up on the wall, and a snake come out of that uh, those dirt huts, and they a poison snake, and it bites you. It's going to kill you. You're just as dead. As if the lion had caught you, if the bear had caught you, and now you think you're safe, and now you lean your hand on your wall, you know how think you got safety, then that poison snake come out and bite you. He says, so the, uh, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness? And not light, even very dull, and no brightness in it. Okay, you cannot fool God. God knows who you are. He knows what type of life you live. He knows whether you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or not. And the same way by in this day of grace. Okay, if you do not accept the Lord and believe the Word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, there are no way you're gonna spend eternity with the Lord. You're gonna spend eternity somewhere. Okay, and this is what he wanted them to understand. Okay, 
but you will not be in the millennium reign of Christ. Okay, you got to go before the white white throne of judgment. Okay, if you are not in Christ, and then he says that uh, in the nineteenth, uh, uh, let's see, in the twenty-first uh, uh, verse. But look at the, what he said in between. Do you think? By studying God's word, what can be learned from our past mistake? What do you think? By studying God's word, what can we learn from our past mistakes? Well, there's a lot of things we can learn. If you don't know God's word, then there's some things you know that you shouldn't do. Okay, but a lot of things you don't know that you should do. So when you find out instead of God's word, what you have not been doing, okay, and you believe God's word, then it's time to repent. I want you to read the book of uh, of uh, Nehemiah, okay, when they when Nehemiah and Ezra Ezra read the word and they had not heard it before, and when Ezra read and they explained it, then the people start crying and we never heard this before. They realized what they were doing was wrong, and he had them not to cry, okay. It was time to repent. Okay, and God is faithful and just to forgive us. Okay, when you learn and when you realize what you are doing wrong, okay, by studying God's word. Okay, First John one nine is to us. Okay, and He is faithful and just to forgive us. So uh, then He tells them in the rest of part of this lesson what they should do. Okay, and God says in the uh, had able to tell them that twenty first verse. I hate, I despise your feast day. I will not smell in your soul of assembly. Though you offer me a burnt offering and meat and your meat offering, I will not accept them, neither will I regard your peace offering, okay, uh, from your fat beast. Okay, now uh, I want you to go back and read the book of uh, Leviticus, the uh, 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 the first chapter, and uh, it gives you okay the uh, there was uh, five different types of offering, okay? But here in the book of Amos, he only mentioned three. He mentioned the uh, burnt offering, he mentioned the meat offering, and he mentioned the peace offering. Well, there were two other offerings, the sin offering and the trespass offering. But let us see what these first three mean. Read, if you read the book of uh, Leviticus, the first chapter, and uh, then uh, read uh, chapter 16 through 13, it tells you what the burnt offering Signified all of these offerings pointing toward the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, then the uh, next offering to mention is a meat offering. So you read about that in the uh, second chapter of Leviticus, and uh, the sixth chapter, verses 14 to 23, and then you read about the peace offering, which is in the third chapter, and uh, 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 verse uh, the seventh chapter, verse 11 through 38. Okay, now uh, the uh, uh, first offering was the burnt offering, okay, and this was the offering that uh, uh, speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ, how He was going to offer Himself totally, okay, on that call for my sin and your sin, okay, and uh, uh, then the uh, meat offering, okay, it was an offering that uh, in the uh, in the second chapter, it was. Uh, Made of uh, fine flour, it had oil, frankincense, and uh, it had salt. And all of these different ingredients represented, okay, the type of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it had the, uh, the peace offering, okay. And uh, the peace offering was the offering, uh, it had killed an animal. And that signified that uh, just like they had killed an animal, okay, when Jesus Christ died on that cross, he shed his blood, okay. He had knew no sin, became a sin offered for us, so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Okay, Second Corinthians uh, uh, five twenty one. Okay, so therefore, uh, uh, then I want you to read the uh, 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 Corinthians one three. I want you to read Philippians uh, four uh, uh, seven, and it tells us about the peace. The peace. Okay. That uh, uh, in Romans 5 and 1, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. But then uh, in uh, Philippians 4 7, it says, uh, Be anxious, don't worry about anything, 
but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. You cannot have the peace of God until you have accepted the peace that is between you and God. See, all of these offerings was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he came, okay, and fulfilled all of those type of offerings. So therefore, they was going to the temple, and they was uh, offering, okay, uh, the place of worship. They was uh, going every Sabbath day. They were keeping all of the feast days, okay. But uh, uh, and they had the best choirs that could be sung the, 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 at that time, okay. And uh, uh, but the Lord says, okay, I hate, I despise your feast days. I will not smell in your soul assembly. Do you offer me these type of offering? Then he said, Take away from me the noise of the, of the, your song, for I will not hear the melody of thy vow. Okay? Uh, uh, God is talking to them as a group. And today, okay, in our worship service today, okay, God does not condemn the whole church or the whole local church or the whole choir. But God speaks to individuals in the choir, in the church, in the pulpit, in the, on the deacon board, on the usher board, okay? And God speaks to us individuals. I don't care what you might be doing in the local church. If you are living in sin and not recognizing the Lord Jesus Christ, then God is saying what you are doing is just noise, okay? And you might have the best choir, uh, voice in the choir, okay? And you get all type of pets on the back. You're doing a great job. People tell you, you preached a great sermon. and uh, But yet still, God is saying, I didn't hear a word you say. Okay? You're living in sin. You're coming to church on a Sunday. And you are pretending. God does not accept pretenders. Okay? God knows. Why are you and me doing whatever we are doing? Okay? And if you're doing it for self-gratification. Okay? Some of us in the church is a beehive of activities. But God is saying, I don't even hear a word you're saying. You're just going through the motion. Okay? And I want you to think about this. Okay? Uh, 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 if you out here doing everything you think you're big enough to uh, six days a week, and then you're coming to the church and uh, not confessing your sin, you're out of fellowship. Even if you come into the communion table, read 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Read from verse 23 to the rest of the chapter. Okay, if you're living in sin, this is why in typology, those priests that were working in the courtyard, they had their brazen altar where they had to wash their hands and feet. Okay, every time they came near it, I don't care how busy they were, they took a ceremonial bath when they went into the priesthood. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we take a bath in the blood of Jesus Christ. We never get so filthy again, we got to take another bath. But we certainly have to wash body parts, okay? Uh, 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 when you say wash uh, in the blood of Jesus Christ, that means uh, 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 luo, L-O-U-O, you've taken a bath. You never have to take another bath, but you have to wash your body part. Nipto, confess your sin. And he told them that you can go into the first room of this tabernacle throughout the day, but don't go in this first room without going by that label. I don't got busy you are and wash your hands and feet. We got to learn how to confess our sin. Okay, don't wait till the evening. Don't wait till Friday or Saturday night. Okay, throughout the day, you never get too busy to confess your sin. Wash your hands and feet. Otherwise, you're out of fellowship. Okay, so he's saying here, uh, 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 do this. Okay, your song is just noise. I'm going to say this. And, uh, uh. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Sometime our worship service and our song service and uh, the way we carry on and what we are singing sometimes, we are not giving God, the Lord, the praise and the glory that is due Him. We are more uh, sometimes in the entertainment business. We don't come to church to be entertained. We come to church to worship and praise the Lord. Okay? We should not be in the pulpit to entertain you should be in there to preach the word of God. Okay? Sometimes we have gotten so far from worship and praising the Lord uh, uh, and, and the way we do things. I wonder sometimes are we 
acting like we are on the uh, uh, stage at the Apollo Theater in Detroit, paying our money to go in to be entertained. We come to church to, or we should, to worship and praise the Lord. Okay? And if you're entertaining, okay, we're doing the holy dance. We sing a song that are uh, not giving the Lord the praises, but they sound good. We're petting our feet. We're clapping our hands. And we're doing all kind of dances. And you wonder sometimes, where did you learn this dancing, this type of dancing in the Bible? Okay? Entertainment. Even in the poor pit. Uh, 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 many times we say things that is not biblical, but it sounds good. Well, it's not what you say that should be sounding good, okay? But it, if it's the Word of God. Sometimes the Word of God is designed that you're not going to shout off it. It cuts. It hurts. But it do you good. Okay? So, uh, don't ever think that He got to accept your coming. Okay? But you got to be right when you come. Okay? And it says that uh, 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 in that 23rd verse, Take away from me the noise of your song. I want to hear the melody of your vow. What you got to do? Let judgment Justice run down like water, and righteousness as a mighty stream. Okay? Look how they were treating the poor. Now, these was other Jews. Okay? They was poor. And look how they were treating them. Okay? And as you look at our culture today, and some of our churches, local churches, look how we treat the uneducated. Look how we treat the, what we call the nobody. If we are not careful, we are casting the uneducated and the poor and the elders aside. We have more educated black peoples in our church today in the history of the black people. Okay? But uh, many of our people that is in control of the local churches in key position, they have the circular education, but they don't have wisdom. Okay? Wisdom is the ability to use knowledge correctly. And any time, did you give other people the impression, I don't need you, you are not important, okay? Don't you even speak up, okay? You are treated poor as second-class citizen in the body of Christ. God does not have no second-class citizen, okay? And therefore, in Christ Jesus, we are all one. The church is the most diversified group in the world. But in diversified, we are to have unity, Okay? There are many things in the church that certain people cannot do. Okay? But there is something that all of us can do because the Spirit of God gives all of us a gift. Okay? And the Spirit of God does not give inferior gifts. So your gift might take you out front. Mine might put me in the background. But if God, the Spirit of God gave that gift, your gift is important. My gift is important. So therefore, be loved and no schism in the vision. There was a problem in the church of Corinth. Envy, strife, and division. And you're living like unsaved people. Okay? And uh, 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 it's bad for someone to tell uh, the church members, you are doing some things that the people of this world will not do. Okay? And uh, uh, fifth chapter of 1 Corinthians. Okay? And the church was uh, members in that time were laughing at it. Okay? But look what it said, injustice. James said, a sin is nothing to laugh at. It's time to weep and moan. Okay? So uh, he says that uh, uh, you let justice run down like uh, uh, water. As I look at this in, in my own analogy, if you pour water uh, on a floor and that floor is on a level, that water, you might think it's level, but that water going to gravitate to the lowest spot. And that low spot going to be filled up first. And then if you keep pouring the water, then the water going to rise up higher and higher. And then it's going to cover the high spots. Then if you keep rising, and that water on the top going to be level. Okay? And therefore, but the unlevel part is going to be underneath. And that's the way it is in the body of Christ. Take care of the poor first. Treat them right. Let justice run down like water. Cover up, take, up, take care of the uh, poor, the underclass. The one you call nobody. They are important. Okay? And then let 
uh, righteousness run down like a mighty stream. The uh, in the King James in the uh, uh, Old Testament it said uh, living water, steady running. But we are seeing uh, floods uh, uh, in the last for a few months in various states, and these floods come down and wipe out everything in its past: houses, trees, big trees, big houses, eighteen wheelers, and whatever else is in the past, it wipes out. And and we are in this Christian race. And this order and this, uh, of faith, we got to learn how to let justice run down and wipe out all things that is uh, contrary to run down like uh, a mighty stream. Okay, and that is not only in the church, but in your community. Some of us have a position in government, state, federal, and local. Got high position. But we want to stay where we are, and therefore we compromise and call yourself a Christian. Well, you've got to learn how to stand up. If you have to stand alone, okay, God is going to take care of you. You are, he is a, a, a God of Sabaoth. The New Testament, which is the same thing, uh, a God of hosts in the Old Testament, okay. And it says that uh, uh, you, okay, you are offering me sacrifice and offering in the wilderness these 40 years, O house of Israel. Okay, now you're talking about the, uh, 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 the whole 12 tribe. And look what they done done. Right? He was uh, doing all this for them in the wilderness. They want to turn away from him and talking about uh, 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 worship a, a calf. Okay, and look how God uh, forgave them. And then he says, you have borne the tabernacle of Morley. You have uh, 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 been blessed in this land. You go into the temple or the place of worship. You offer these sacrifices, but yet still you're worshiping our gods. Okay? But you're pretending. And you come into these feast days. You bring these feast offerings. You're keeping the Sabbath. But I know who you are, and I will not accept that. Okay, these are the gods. You worship the sun god, Saturn, the moon god. Okay, and say, therefore, I will cause you to go into captivity beyond your Damascus, says the Lord, says Jehovah, whose name is the God of hosts. I got the power, I got the authority, I got the military power to take you into captivity beyond Damascus. Damascus was north of uh, Samaria. The Damascus was the headquarters of Syria. Okay? But beyond Syria was the Assyrian. And they was going to take Damascus in captivity. And then they were going to come on down a little further south and take the uh, Samaritan, the northern kingdom, into captivity. And they will become come known, known as the ten lost tribe of Israel. And today, 722 B.C. See, this was uh, 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 talked about in about 760. Uh, but in 722, the Assyrian, okay, taking Damascus and they're taking, come on down and they taking uh, uh, Samaria, kept the Jews into Captivity. Today they are still known as the Ten Lost Tribe. Then he talk about the House of Judah. Okay, they were no better than the uh, Northern Kingdom. They were going to be taken into captivity by Babylon. Okay, and uh, 586 BC, and they're going to be there for seventy years, all because, okay, God had blessed them in the land, and they. Are here tearing away from God. Okay. God keeps his covenant. That's a promise. God is not satisfied with his people, whether they the church or the nation of Israel, that time living in sin. We can be so ungrateful. The children of Israel should have realized that all that God had done for them as a nation. And we should realize. To where God have brought us from. Sin and darkness. 
couldn't help ourselves. Now in Christ Jesus, we have liberty. We have the Spirit of God to guide us. But yet and still, we allow Satan to take charge. We compromise and think that God have to accept our coming. Well, we got, we got another thing coming. God is saying, I haven't accepted. I will not accept it. And then look at the closing thoughts. Some people cover their evil ways with outward action of goodness. Who will recover their deceit and demand justice. The people learn through Amos that God will not be fooled by insincere offering and will severely punish all sinners. We are not going to lose our salvation, but we got to go before the bema seat or the judgment seat of Christ. And that's for our rewards. But many of us that are saved, we're going to go there and we will not receive any reward. We'll be have our activity. But what we are doing, we're doing it for the wrong motive. And God does not have rewards for people who are in the local church, been saved, and doing things for the wrong motive. The unsaved got to go before the great white, white white throne of judgment. And they're going to be judged because their name is not written in the Lamb Book of Life. They are not saved. They're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Okay? And they're going to spend eternity being punished. We hope that as we study this lesson, don't just stay back there with the nation of Israel when you get the correct interpretation. But make sure you make application that is very applicable to our life. Too many of us in the church today think that I can live in a way I think I'm big enough to. Pay my money, talk good, sing good, pray good, preach good. So the people say. But God is saying, I don't hear a word you say. You're living in sin. You're out of fellowship. But God has fixed it. You may more telling the people to repent. Before it's too late. God is saying the same thing to you and to me today. If you're living in sin and would not repent, I'm going to eventually like, have to call you home early. Thank God. We are secure. But we got to be obedient to the word of God to receive rewards.